What up, guys? What's good? Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Um, this is Dear Cheekies, okay? And this is a podcast where I answer your questions, anonymous questions. I don't listen to them before anyone else. I listen to them right here with you guys in real time. So let's get this episode started because I'm sure we have very good questions. Our first question comes from Melissa. Hi, Cheekies. Where do I start? Well, I have a man que también celoso y... No sé qué hacer. We can't go out to eat. We can't go out to drink. We can't do anything. I'm so lost. He did 18 years in prison, so a lot of people tell me that it is because he's so institutionalized. I just need some help. Girl, straight up, huh? All right, I'm going to be straight up. It's going to be tough, and you have to understand him because he was incarcerated for a long time. So now coming out to the real world is difficult to adjust, especially having a woman and uh, it's just jealousy is is just not cute. It, it will cause a lot of issues. I think you just need to try and just say, hey, like you need to trust me. If there is no trust in a relationship, it's just it's going to go left. Like I'm telling you from experience. So you need to have this conversation. If not, you tell him if you can't stop with your jealousy and I, I want to do things. I want to go out. I want to live my life. I can't just be in this house you know, I understand your circumstances and what happened, but we need to move past that. And in order to be a happy woman for myself and for you, I need to see the world and he needs to be more secure and you need to give him security. Like you also need to do certain things to make sure that he knows that you're faithful and that you're loyal to him. It's going to take some work. It's not impossible. Um, but you need to have this conversation, open conversation and say, hey, if we can't work on this, I, I don't see this working. So give yourself in your mind, or if you want to tell him, hey, I'm giving us six months. If we can't work through these issues, then I got to go. I'm not saying six months. It could be a year. Whatever you decide. What I'm saying is you have to set something because jealousy is not going to take you anywhere good. And vice versa, you know? So I hope that helps, Miss Melissa. Okay, our next question comes from Leslie. Hi, my love. It's Leslie. I just wanted to say thank you for an amazing performance and amazing experience in your San Diego concert. That night was magical. You made me feel on cloud nine. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it. Thank you so much. I did have a question about the concert, though. I mean, obviously, it's a bittersweet concert, and I wouldn't want you to resent the concert because of what happened so I guess that's my question do you feel a type of way because of the concert I also did want to congratulate you on your wedding I'm so happy for you I also got married I got married July 3rd so las dos casaditas honestly your podcast where you had talked about how your doctor had mentioned that because of removing the polyps you would probably be able to get pregnant naturally I knew I knew it was going to happen, but never did I imagine that what happened was going to happen. And that made me cry. It made me sad. I wish you nothing but the best. I just want you to be happy. Con Dios todo, sin el nada. And yeah, I hope to see you very soon. I am doing better in not being as shy around you. And yeah, we should get dinner sometimes. I love you. Yo pago. Besos. Oh, <laughs> Leslie, I love you, mamacita. Thank you so much. Um, I love hearing your voice. Thank you so much for going to the concert. Um, and, you know, just to answer your question, absolutely not. I don't feel any type of negative way towards that concert because I was pregnant. I felt so amazing that night and I felt invincible. I felt like I could do anything and everything. If anything, I'm just grateful that I was able to experience that feeling and know that I'm able to go on on tour to go um, on stage being pregnant and only God knows, como dices tú, con Dios todo sin el nada. Yes, amen. And that is what still has me here. And obviously the love that you guys give me and the support, you have no idea. And me, it's like the motor. It, it's what keeps me going. So thank you so much, baby. And um, congratulations on your wedding. Oh my goodness. July 3rd and July 5th. Love that for us. Um, but anyways, I love you and I'm sending you a big kiss, baby. Thank you so much. Mwah. Okay, guys, we're still not done, so don't get too excited. Uh, we have another question from an anonymous listener. Let's see. Hey, Cheekies. This might be a little bit triggering, so I apologize ahead of time. 
but I need your advice on something. It's going on three years that my 15-year-old daughter was killed in a run accident uh, where we live in Des Moines, Iowa. I have been fighting for safer streets, advocating for, you know, safer streets for our students. I ran for public office and I won. So I have accomplished a lot and advocated for things. But as a mom, I still struggle. So currently, we um, are trying to sell our house, uh, remodel it, rent it, or whatever we want to do. And I have not cleaned her room out. So I need your advice. I know you guys did it publicly and on the reality show, but how did you overcome cleaning your mom's room, cleaning up your guys' house after her death? Because I cannot do it. I cannot find myself to go into your room and pack up her stuff. Oh my gosh, my lovely listener. I wish I knew your name, but it's okay um, that I don't. Um, oh, okay, first of all, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. I can't even imagine. You sound very strong. And I, I think it's because you're going out in the world and because of this very hurtful and traumatic experience and situation, it's I think giving you that that courage, that like fire inside of you to to make a change. And I think that you're turning that pain into something beautiful for the world. So I just want to say that I admire you for doing that. Um, and congratulations for winning as well. And um, in regards to your question, it's it's never going to be easy. It doesn't matter if it's 10 years from now. It's just when you do it, it's going to hurt and it's going to be very hard and you're going to cry and you have to allow yourself to feel those feelings and don't feel like you're just getting like rid of her or her memory or it's not that. It's actually very healing for the healing process. It, it really does help a lot. Um, because it's stagnant energy. And in order for you to move on, obviously it's your daughter. It's hard to even say that. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's something, it's a void that is never going to be completely filled. It's 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 a wound that's never going to be completely healed ever. Um, so I think that she's definitely, and I always say this because I truly believe it, she's in a better place and she's with you. And I think those things that are her things are, things and the best way that you can honor her is doing what you're doing for the world it's a beautiful thing um and i think it's really going to help you if you put her things away or give them away save some donate others again as i say it it, it makes my heart hurt because i i know the feeling and this is your child this is someone that you gave birth to like i can't i can't even imagine you know um but I can tell you from personal experience that when we did it, as painful as it was, it really helped us. And it's also kind of giving, it gave my mom that like, okay to like, hey, go ahead, rest. You know what I mean? I, I don't know the right word for it, but that's the feeling I got. Like we were liberating each other and it was like a chain that was keeping us like stuck. And once that was like, everything was put away and we gave some stuff away. It just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You're going to know when, once you get yourself to do it, but don't rush it. If you don't feel it yet, don't do it. But if you feel that something's telling you to do it, and this is why you're asking, then maybe it is time, but don't let anyone rush you do it at your own pace, maybe little by little and feel the feels you're going to feel it. But I promise you, it will make you feel a lot better afterwards. So, yeah, let me know what you decide. We, I would love to hear it here. All right, guys, our uh, next and last question comes from Aaliyah. Hi, Chickies. It's Aaliyah. You already know. Hi, I love Aaliyah. you so much. But <laughs> my question, I've been wanting to ask you this ever since I found out you're going to be a judge for La Academia. Honestly, I had no idea what that show was. But when I found out you're going to be a judge and it was like a singing like competition show, I was like, oh, my God, I should have auditioned. Oh, my gosh. But my question was, would you or like, are you ever going to be a judge, hopefully for like Tengo Talento again? 
because it would just be such an honor for me to like sing for you and you judge it. And obviously, if you were a judge, I would apply for any freaking show. I would probably sing like Asmi on Battle because that's like my absolute favorite song from your new Diamantes album. But anyways, yeah, like when you were on Tengo Talento a few years ago, I would have never had the confidence to sing in front of an audience like ever. I was like the shyest kid you would have ever met when I was little, but I feel like I've really grown out of it. And Last time I was on Dear Cheeky's asking my question, um, I asked you if I should sing the national anthem and you told me, yeah. And honestly, if you wouldn't have told me, I would have never gotten the confidence to sing. And you're just such a huge part in my life. You're my biggest inspiration, like ever, especially for singing. Like I just admire you and you literally are my role model. I love you so much. Pero ya tu sabes, bro. Like, girl, <laughs> I love you so much. Aaliyah, my beautiful Aaliyah, I freaking love you. Your energy is amazing. Well, now I'm glad because you told me in person that you uh, sang the national anthem. So I'm very proud of you. Good job. And then you went on stage with me and sang. So I'm so proud of you. Um, you did amazing. You have a beautiful voice, mama, a beautiful voice. And I don't know if I'll ever do Tengo Talento again. Um, I believe they had their last season. Uh, but there is another show that you can probably audition to. Um, I'll give you the information privately so that maybe you can audition to that one um, because people need to hear your voice. You you honestly sing so beautifully and you're a beautiful little girl. Not little because yes, that's going to see that you're like 16, 17. No, but anyways, you're a beautiful young lady and um, I love your voice, by the way. So keep it going, baby. I am very, very proud of you. And thank you for always just listening to the podcast and my music and just supporting everything. I love you. I love you so much, honestly. I love all of you guys. Thank you. Because that concludes our episode, you guys. So thank you to Melissa Leslie, our anonymous listener, who I am honestly, I'm, I'm hoping that just sending you a hug of strength. And to Aaliyah. Thank you guys for your questions. And I hope that I was able to help. And if you have a question of any type, could be any subject, go to speakpipe.com slash chickies and chill podcast, okay? Hasta la próxima. Los amo. Mwah. This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Chiquis, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows.